It's one thing for someone to be underrated for a year or so, but DJ has been overlooked from the very get-go, so I figured it was about time to give him some flowers. Looking to make it 11, end zone! <laughs> To set the scene, Denison Oliver, or DJ Moore, was born back in 97 in good old Philadelphia. Honestly, I couldn't find much about his time leading up to high school, but it's easy to guess that DJ was a star in the Pop Warner scene, and was able to carry that into I'm Hotip Charter, where he played high school ball with guess what? The Panthers. With I'm Hotip, DJ was a do-it-all kind of player, as he did everything from punting to catching touchdowns. And let's just say that he caught a good number of them, as he ended his career with over 2,000 yards and 32 touchdowns through the year. Not too shabby in my books, but his senior year is where DJ really put in the work with over 1,000 yards and 16 touchdowns, which is all the more impressive considering just how much he did for the team. Nonetheless, after a heck of a senior year for DJ, he was literally able to earn some stars, and three of them to be exact, as a top 10 recruit in the state, with interest from schools like Indiana, Illinois, in Maryland. But even though he's getting attention, one team absent from the list was the hometown Penn State Ninini Lions, who happened to sign six of the seven top ten in-state players in that class, including the stud in Saquon Barkley. Barkley from inside his own five. Barkley, 97 yards! Put simply, DJ didn't make the cut because Penn State wanted him to play safety, which makes sense when you consider that they were going after big bodied 6'4 or 6'5 foot targets instead of a young stud like DJ at 5'11. Interestingly enough, the recruiters thought that he was an NFL caliber DB if he took the role, but no matter the case, it wasn't the path that DJ wanted to take, so he eventually decided to take a trip out of state to the good old Maryland Terrapins. Although Maryland doesn't necessarily get the best rep considering the fact that they usually finish near the bottom of the Big Ten. Going into DJ's first year with the team, they were coming off a 7-5 year in 2014, and a future superstar in Stefan Diggs had just declared for the NFL draft. Hannah steps into it, pack, this is caught, Diggs! So all things considered, DJ was stepping into a pretty good situation with the Terrapins, and so it made all the more sense that he was able to start 10 games as only a true freshman, and upon that put up a decent 350 yards and 3 touchdowns. The stats were solid for first year wideout, but didn't help a Maryland team that had just lost their starting quarterback, and so they limped to a 3-9 record, with their only wins against Richmond, South Florida, and Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> After what was a pretty rough year for DJ and the Terrapins, going into 2016, the hope was there that the tides could start turning and they could put together more wins than three. And dope enough, they did that in the first four weeks. Back to back to back to back wins to start off the year were huge for a team that was coming off a humiliating 2015 season. But let's just say that the good times didn't keep rolling. <laughs> Following a 4-0 start, Maryland finished the year 2-6 to end just at 500, and although they were able to make a bowl game against BC, the Eagles were a bit too much as they ended what was a very rocky Turpin season on a pretty sour note. Even though his team didn't exactly have the most consistent year, DJ was still able to do his thing with this time over 600 yards and 6 touchdowns, as he was able to solidify his spot as one of the best up-and-coming receivers in the Big Ten. <laughs> After taking quite an impressive leap from his freshman to sophomore seasons, I'm sure that DJ was looking to do the same thing going into the pivotal junior year. And even though it's a bit tricky on a team that's not full of superstars, it didn't keep DJ from doing his thing. Bull DJ's 1,000 yards and 8 touchdowns were pretty much the same production as his first two years combined, and so the performance was able to earn him some kudos from the college football world, as he was named the Richter Howard Receiver of the Year, an award given to the best wideout in the Big Ten, and so it only made sense that he was first team all-conference. Although DJ had pretty much gone completely under the radar through his first two seasons in Maryland, as a junior, his over 1,000 through the year earned him some attention from the next level, so it wasn't much of a surprise that DJ declared for that draft, in what was a bit of a unique receiver class with guys like Calvin Ridley and Cortland Sutton. But even though Calvin was out of Bama, and even though DJ wasn't nearly established as a two-time all-conference talent like Cortland, it didn't change the fact that DJ was the first wide receiver taken off the board. The Carolina Panthers select Jay Moore. Wide receiver, Maryland. Sorry to stop the video, but since you're here, it'd be awesome if you could subscribe, like, turn on post notifications, and comment down below what you think DJ is going to do in Chicago. But anyways, back to the video. DJ's impressive combine performance with the receiver leading broad jump, 4.4240, and the second best vertical jump helped him go from a mid-round prospect to the cream of the crop as Carolina selected him 24th off the board. Crazy how a 3-star out of high school was the first receiver taken, but DJ deserved the love after his journey to the league. And luckily enough, he was joining a Panthers team that was coming off an impressive 11-5 season behind good old Super Cam. Packed by heart disease, Cam Newton. 
May go. Going into his first year in Carolina, DJ was joining a very interesting receiver room with guys like Curtis Samuel, Devin Funches, and the do it all back in Christian McCaffrey. So you'd think that DJ would put up numbers similar to his freshman production at Maryland. But surprisingly enough, he was able to do quite a bit more than that. Sings it over the middle to Moore, who gets belted, still on his feet, and he's up. Moore, staying alive. As only a rookie, DJ put up just under 800 yards and two touchdowns, which I would consider to be pretty impressive numbers. And yet he was only the second leading receiver on his team behind the Phenom and Christian McCaffrey. Although funny enough, the numbers were still good enough to earn him a spot on the Pro Football Writers All-Rookie Team. Talking about that team, DJ was only the second Panthers receiver to make it since Ray Carruth back in 97, which funny enough just so happens to be the year that DJ was born. So needless to say, their performance was pretty dang impressive. Even though DJ did his thing as a rookie, the Panthers had a bit of a down year, as this time their 7-9 season wasn't good enough to earn them a ticket to a second straight playoff appearance. Nonetheless, the Maryland stud proved that he could still do his thing on the next level, so going into his sophomore year in 2019, the only real question was whether or not he could take his game up a level once again. And let's just say that the answer was yes. Allen steps up and goes deep, he's got a wide open target, and it is caught for the touchdown by Moore! 800 yards and 2 touchdowns are good, but nearly 1200 yards and 4 touchdowns is a whole lot better, as this time DJ was the leader in Carolina, even though Christian himself was somehow able to put up over 1000 through the air. Nonetheless, just like back in Maryland, DJ was able to solidify his spot as one of the very best young wideouts in the league. Are you serious right now bro? First down! But since he was in a pretty small market like Carolina, DJ was overshadowed by Supercam and the Superstar in CMC, although I doubt that he cared that much. Usually I talk about hype when someone puts up a season like DJ did in 2019, but after doing pretty much the same thing in 2020 on 20 fewer catches, the stellar play simply became the standard for a guy who would quickly become one of the most underrated players in the league. The same guy who put up over 1150 yards and 4 touchdowns on a Panthers team that went 5-12 and with 3 different quarterbacks in 2021. Winning the NFC South. DJ Although he wasn't getting national attention, the Panthers were well aware of the superstar they had in DJ, as they signed him to a three-year, nearly $62 million contract extension that offseason. And even though you'd guess that he'd put up nearly 1200 once again, especially with Christian McCaffrey leaving midway through that season, it seems like the whole sophomore slump thing kicked in three years later, although DJ was still able to put up nearly 900 yards and a career-best seven touchdowns. Once again, quarterback problems and the fact that Carolina drafted a pretty solid wideout in Terrence Marshall were likely key factors behind the dip in production, which in itself wasn't that much, and I guess it's inevitable when you get nearly 50 fewer targets than you did the previous season. But no matter the case, DJ got a bag, and I'm sure that he'll be back in business in 23, even on a team that has had a pretty dang rough last few years. Cause talent doesn't take a break, talent doesn't take a vacation, it will make itself known whether or not the rest of the world acknowledges it. Newton throws, corner oh. the end zone, what a catch! If DJ did the exact same thing that he's done in Carolina, in somewhere like LA or New York, everyone would be praising him to the moon and back. It's the simple fact that DJ is in Carolina that is the so-called secret recipe behind why he is so underrated. But honestly, I don't think it's a bad thing. Sure, DJ may not get the sponsorships or airtime like his colleagues, but he also doesn't have to worry about dealing with all the hoopla. All DJ has to do is keep playing well and doing his thing, and eventually he'll get his flowers. It's only a matter of time. A massive, massive draft haul and a top receiver. I wrote this entire script the day before this massive trade went down, but thankfully enough, I held back on recording it, which is great because this move is huge. DJ may be going to what was arguably the worst team in football last year, but he's also going to a team with a young superstar in Justin Fields and a team where DJ could take his game to the next level. So even though it will likely take some time for the Bears to get back to the place where they've been in the past, I think that this is the start of something truly special. But anyways, what do you guys think that DJ Moore will do in Chicago? Will he be able to take his game to another level or is it a bit too much to ask for? Comment down below your thoughts. DJ Moore is used to being overlooked and counted out, so even though he may not get the same love as those around him, it won't stop him from becoming one of the very best receivers in the league before you know it. And now Walker fires downfield, looking for DJ Moore. Oh my God! Makes a diving catch. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, like, turn on post notifications, and comment down below what stuff you want next. But anyways, see you all soon, and peace out.